Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts and Cross Nation. For today's video, we're going to be discussing the new uh, buff cap increase that's going to be happening fairly soon to the global version of the game. Uh, it's already happened and live as of right now in the JP version of the game. Um, and I am assuming that sooner or later, probably within a week or two, uh, global will receive the new update as well uh, now just in case i don't really see it taking any longer than like a month at most to get the update but regardless of how you look at it we are going to be receiving the update fairly soon so i wanted to spend this video discussing on how big of an impact the new buff cap increase uh, is going to inflict on the current status of meta setups and such um, as to um, as well as like what type of strategies got uh, buffed or nerfed or if you don't know what that means which ones got better which ones got worse uh, what's going to see more use less use that type of thing and not just strategies alone we'll also be talking about metals individual types of metals as well of course but overall we're going to be discussing what exactly is being affected by the new buff cap increase and in a way also discussing what the new meta is going to be looking like so without further ado, let's get started with the video. So first of all, we're going to start off with the loser side of the equation, uh, primarily because the fact that there's actually less metals that got negatively affected by the new buff cap increase compared to what got positively uh, impacted instead. So just for the sake of making it easier, as well as to help transition and such into the conversation, we'll be starting off with the loser side of things. So first of all, and this is something that I've mentioned a little bit in the past as well when they first came out and such, but as you might be aware, pretty much almost all of the overwrite uh, type metals in the game pretty much got nerfed a little bit just because of the fact that you can no longer just slap them in the middle of a Keyblade setup uh, if you wanted to because of the fact that, well, the cap is no longer at 7. Uh, the cap is no longer at 7, which is, for the most part, the majority of the overwrite metals, uh, like, number limit in their abilities. The most buffs and debuffs that they would provide is at 7. So, the fact that the cap is now beyond 7, it's more than double 7, uh, it's actually going to be a hindrance because, just as an FYI, in case you're not aware, if you use an overwrite metal in the middle of your setup, it will erase any extra buffs or debuffs you happen to have obtained that uh, that were above seven, 7 by that time. So just as a quick an example to show what I'm talking about, right here on the screen, I just have a quick example of the type of scenarios you might be looking at in terms of overwrite. Now, because of the fact that overwrite completely erases all of the stats that it affects and replaces it with its own stats, that's going to mean they're going to want it at the very beginning of your Keyblade. Um, and you basically can't put it anywhere else in your Keyblade setup anymore. This is a perfect example. This is a just quick, easy example of what I mean. So like we have Kyrie EX Plus right here in slot 1, providing plus 7 and minus 7 buffs and debuffs. And we're just having two Kyrie EX medals over here providing the majority of the other buffs and debuffs as is shown over here on the right hand side. Now, if I were to get rid of the uh the carry ex plus you can see over here that most of the buffs at the very least are above seven and some of the debuffs are above seven as well so what would happen is if i actually put carry ex after those carry ex plus medals instead you can see now that all of the buffs got reset to seven as well as the debuffs got reset to seven as well the Kairi EX right here in this four slot because it came later in the setup after we already did some initial buffs will completely erase anything you did beforehand and replace it with its own stat. So no matter how much you buff or debuff in the beginning portions of the Keyblade, if you end up putting an overwrite metal later up in the setup, it will completely erase everything that you just built and making it completely useless. So because of that, you legitimately have to put all of your overwrite metals at the very beginning of your setup. That also means that you've pretty much for the most part can't use multiple overwrite metals in your setups either and it's because of this which is why that overwrite metals as a whole got a pretty huge nerf now luckily there weren't too many overwrite metals in the game to begin with so it's not too much of a big deal but i'm i'm pretty sure that a large majority of us or at least a large portion of us within the community have been probably especially newer players have probably been 
over relying on the overwrite medals to basically carry them through the game um, especially if you're a newer player because chances are you've just been using an overwrite medal and don't actually know how to make an actual legitimate proper setup in which case this new 15 plus cap increase is going to hit you hard because you went from just having medals that do everything and you don't have to worry about your setup to now having to worry about your setup and never really been legitimately taught how to make proper setups <laughs> so I feel for you there, but don't worry. Now, because of the fact that these uh, the, the buff cap increase is going to happen, I am looking to finally get started on making my uh, setup guide that I suggested a while ago. Um, so look forward to that. But out of all of the overwrite medals, the medals that probably got hit the hardest are legitimately going to be all of the foreteller medals. Now, we saw this coming. I've stated this multiple times that if anything, we're going to nerf uh, or or kind of like replace either the stained glass or the foretellers. The foretellers would be hit the hardest, uh, and that is for sure. Because as it is right now, because of the fact you have to put all of your overwrite medals in the first slot, essentially, of all of your setups, that is essentially meaning that we went from having the four teller medals who are by far the strongest aoe damage medals in the entire game um, and were being mainly used as just damage medals who just happen to have override abilities now with the plus 15 uh, cap increase you can no longer use it as a main damage medal and you instead you would have to use the four tellers as main buffer and debuffer medals instead so like for example i would just instead of Kyrie over here i could put a said right here instead in which case because of fact it's being used as a main buffer metal instead uh you're much better off just using a stained glass metal instead so weirdly enough the plus 15 cap increase before the cap increase the four tellers and stained glass metals they were like this close to each other they're like super similar but like the stained glass metals had that slight extra edge that just made them better but with this new cap increase the the gap between them just widened a bunch more so now it's like the stained glass metals just completely overshadow the four tellers at this point uh, just because of the fact that the four tellers just do not provide as much of an advantage as the stained glass metals, because the stained glass metals are legitimate main buffer and debuffer metals compared to the four teller metals who are not as much. Granted, you can still use them as main buffer debuffer metals, but that takes away from what you want to be using them for, which is for as a main damage metal, uh, which you can no longer do. It is worth noting as well that the specific four teller medals that got hit the hardest and which for the most part are not exactly trash but are by far some of the worst overwrite medals in the game now are going to be Ava and Ira mainly because of the fact that their abilities only last for one turn. This is specifically because of the fact that with the new cap increase, the buffer method that I made a video about uh, a while ago, I'll leave a card up above in case you wish to learn more about it. The buffer method alone has gotten a huge buff overall, no pun intended, but because of that, that just means that Ased, Gula, and Envy over here, even though they're not able to be used as main damage medals anymore, because of the fact that their abilities last for three turns, means that they got even better because they can actually help support the buffer method in PvP these days now as well, uh, which means they can still use see some significant use. And again, I'll go more into uh, how huge of a buff the buffer method received uh, later on in the video. But overall, out of all of the overwrite medals currently available in the game, the foretellers um, got hit the hardest just because of the fact that they are basically being forced into a role which wasn't their original intention, which was being mainly a damage medal for the most part. One last thing about the foretellers, I kind of mentioned it a little bit beforehand already, but because of the fact that they have overwrite, that means you pretty much don't want to use more than one foreteller in a single setup, specifically because of the fact that they will not actually add anything above or beyond seven uh, to your stat changes. So as you can see right here, even though I have a said and envy over here in the same setup, my stats are just strictly stuck at seven. I cannot get them beyond seven anywhere closer to the plus 15 cap. 
so for the most part those are pretty much the majority of the actual medals that received the hardest nerfs in terms of this new 15 plus cap so now let's go ahead and talk about what actually got buffs because of this plus 15 cap and it's actually quite a lot first of all we'll start with the obvious ones being starting with for example, the OG Kyrie EX and Shion EX medals. The main reasons why these medals received such a big buff because of this new cap increase is specifically because of the fact that their abilities do not have overwrite and they legitimately increase and decrease buffs and debuffs, which means that in a setup you can actually use uh, the Kyrie and Shion EX medals in conjunction with the actual Kyrie and Shion EX Plus medals as well. So you would put Kyrie and Shion EX Plus in slot one and then have the OG Kyrie and Shion EX medals in the next slot. Uh, so that way you can actually go beyond uh, the plus seven that the Kyrie and Shion EX Plus medals restrict you to. So just because of the fact that they actually increase and they don't have overwrite themselves, Kyrie and Shion EX uh, received quite a bit of a buff with this new cap increase and are going to see much more use. Uh, and likewise, weirdly enough, even Namine EX Plus received a bit of a buff as well, just because of the fact that she does increase all of the strength buffs in the game except reverse and the full amount of PSM strength buffs that she provides is going to be very useful. Uh, to take advantage of. So it's a very good possibility that people might actually start being able to use uh, Nominate EX Plus now, uh, finally, because for the most part, Nominate EX Plus has been pretty much unusable for pretty much ever since she first came out. She's a very interesting metal. One metal that like I really wish I could use, but because of the fact that she doesn't actually help out, at least not before the cap increase, she was pretty much not really usable at all whatsoever. She would actually reduce your damage output rather than increasing it or helping out your setup for the most part. But with the new cap increase, you can actually use her now to help you get to the plus 15 uh, cap as well as even potentially making some of your metals AOE uh, type metals as well because of her unique mechanic. It is worth noting too that her ability does last for three turns which also adds to the buffer method so you could potentially see her being used in PvP more often now. The other types of metals that received huge buffs uh, because of this new cap increase is ultimately going to be the stained glass metals and when I say the stained glass metals I mean the OG original six stained glass metals uh, and this is purely because of the fact that they again don't have overwrite they just increase and de decrease stats which means and if you happen to take a look at the meta section tab on my website at k2xnation.com i have updated all of the one turn setups uh, for the game for all of the keyblades and even rank them according to tier level by their damage uh, thanks to Rosie from khuxtracker.com. She let me have access to a little bit of a, a beta version of the site uh, with the plus 15 cap increase. They're not currently available at the time of making this video for you guys to use because uh, it does require a little bit of testing as Rosie has stated. Uh, but at the very least, I was able to put together some setups in advance to give you guys some insight as to what type of setups we're going to be looking for. So if you want to take a look at the types of setups uh, that are going to be meta with the plus 15 buff cap increase taken into account, go ahead and check out my website. Uh, at the very least, all of my one turn setups are currently updated and I'll probably get to all of my universal or in other words, multi turn setups uh, later on as well. But the one thing that definitely stood out to me about the one turn setups were that the old school stained glass metals were pretty much used in almost every single setup. From what I've been able to discern from the one turn setups is that Pretty much every single stained glass metal in the game right now is hardcore meta. Not only do the new stained glass metals provide a very core foundational basis uh, for us to start off our buffs and debuffs with, but you would actually use the old stained glass metals after using the new ones to actually ma help max out the rest of your buffs and debuffs as well. Um, so it was very interesting <laughs> uh, and I highly recommend you check out the website for further insight. Now in conjunction with the main buffer and debuffer metals uh, that got buffed, the other types of metals uh, that got hugely buffed as well to go alongside it are going to be pretty much for the most part uh, most of the 
prime medals in the game, especially the tier 5 prime medals that provide uh, plus and minus 7 buffs and debuffs, uh, such as Riku Roxas, Sh Riku, um, Roxas Shion, Illustrated Roxas and such. This is pretty much a given just because of the fact that they do provide plus and minus 7 buffs and debuffs, which alongside with like a stained glass medal or Kyrie Shion EX Plus just helps you be able to reach that plus 15 uh, buff cap a whole lot easier. It's also also worth noting as well uh, that the Supernova medals uh, alongside the Prime medals also get buffed too because pretty much for the most part, excluding the Supernova mechanic, the actual individual abilities of the Supernova medals are pretty much the same exact thing as the stained glass metal abilities, the tier five stained glass metal ones. Um, the only real main difference between them is that like the supernova medals actually have a full minus seven general defense debuff compared to the tier five prime medals who only really have like a minus four or a minus five general defense down debuff but aside from that their abilities are almost exactly the same and it's worth noting as well too that Kingdom Hearts 3 Riku EX Plus is included in that just because of the fact that he's pretty much exactly the same as the Supernova Medals. He just doesn't have the Supernova mechanic attached to him. Uh, so the Prime Medals, the Supernova Medals, and Riku all together got huge buffs just because of the fact they don't have overwrite and they provide plus and minus 7 buffs and debuffs. Now I kind of briefly mentioned it previously before. But the new stained glass medals, even though they have overwrite, actually became a shit ton of a lot more useful. And a large reason for that is because of the fact that they provide both upright and reverse buffs and debuffs. Uh, so like for example, if we were to use a stained glass metal, stained glass number seven, on a keyblade such as Mugo Glory, which does have both upright and reverse slots, having both upright and reverse buffs and debuffs on a single metal like the stained glass is going to be critically important and to maximize the damage output of your keyblade. Because now, because of the fact that this stained glass number seven here provides both upright and reverse buffs and debuffs for power, for example, I only have to worry about providing buffs and debuffs for upright and reverse just one more time each so if i wanted to just say for example i can put stained glass number one in slot two this will fill out the uh the majority of my general strength as well as my upright strength uh and a little bit of my general defense down and i can even put in the next slot uh, something like supernova sephiroth which will provide the rest of general defense down uh the rest for the most part the rest of the reverse debuffs the rest of the power debuffs power buffs uh and and some of the reverse buffs as well so for the most part just within my first few medals i already received most of my buffs and debuffs and if i want the rest of the upright stuff um or even like if I just want the rest of my magic buffs and debuffs, I can just use like Prime Illustrated Roxas over here. Boom. And then on my fifth slot, I can even do like Prime King Mickey. And look at this. This together just casually flowed into one giant setup that was able to pretty much max out the buffs and debuffs within each of their respective slots right here without having to worry too much about... Uh, the upright and reverse buffs and debuffs for the most part just because of the fact that the stained glass model took care of the first half of them for us already if it wasn't for that and say for example we were using just a hd era ex plus for example uh we are missing out on half of the reverse buffs and debuffs now just because of the fact that era does not provide that sure um Sure, we still have all the magic buffs and debuffs that we basically need, but the reverse section is going to definitely be lacking because ERA just won't provide that. And this is pretty much why the stained glass models are so meta right now as soon as the new cap increase happens. Now, despite saying all that, the one metal that by far probably got the biggest buff in the entirety of the game and i swear you not that when i was making my setups uh for my website this one metal alone would legitimately add an entire 30 million to like 50 million extra damage alone being added to uh the setup uh and that metal was scrooge mcduck <laughs> scrooge mcduck alongside a overwrite metal such as the same glass metals is has got to be by far the most 
OP buffer metal in the entire game as of right now. Just because of the fact that he quite literally provides almost everything for you. All right, he provides plus seven general strength buff, uh, plus seven PSM strength buff, and the PSM buffs and debuffs that he provide, which are at plus seven, are by far one of the most useful of the entirety. The other half of it, why he's so OP, is because he actually provides minus seven general defense down too. So if I were to put him alongside a stained glass metal, quite literally, you already have the majority of all of your buffs and debuffs achieved in just two metals. It is ridiculous. And now if you don't have Scrooge McDuck, the next best alternative is the old school uh, stained glass metals numbers one through six. Uh, but dear lord, he alone just added so much damage to the setups. It was just ridiculous. It, it's it's quite ridiculous how much uh, Scrooge McDuck just completely took over the meta. He went from not even being used anymore to just hardcore dominating. <laughs> It's insane. Uh, so if you are lucky enough to have a Scrooge McDuck uh, many months ago from when we had the DuckTales uh, collaboration event, and then congratulations for you. I officially despise you <laughs> just because of the fact of how jealous that I am. But no, for reals. Uh, if you happen to have one, congrats, because like he's going to by far help you out so much. All right, so last but not least, the last types of metals that are actually being buffed, um, although not directly buffed, but more of like an indirect buff, are going to be any of the dispel type metals. Now this is purely for PVP, although the reason that they became better and they are probably going to be actually used as a legitimate strategy from now on, they were always kind of there to be used in PVP, but that weren't ne necessarily necessary because of all the overwrite metals in the game right now. Uh, but the main reason why they are going to see more use is because of the fact that the buffer method became so much better now. Uh, and because the buffer method became so much better, the dispel metals became more viable to use against buffer strategies, which are going to heavily be used in PvP, that's for sure. Uh, and that's just kind of like a side effect of that. Um, and I'll go more into that in a second. But other than that, those are pretty much the main types of metals that either won or lost in terms of the new buff cap change and stuff. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about real quick before I end this video are going to be the actual overarching strategies that also got uh, affected because of this buff. Uh, so starting off with, for the most part, PvP related strategies. Ailment strategies pretty much got a huge buff uh, for their usage uh, and this is mainly because of the fact that like I mentioned before setups are going to be required to start putting any of their overwrite metals back in the beginning portions of their setup now uh, you will no longer be able to put your overwrite metals towards like the middle section of your setups so now even if the opponent tries to be clever and tries to put their overwrite metal over here in the third slot of their keyblade to kind of like soft counter the element strategy the problem with that now is because of the fact that they missed out on their first two uh, slots on their setup they are basically trying to make up for the lack of buffs and debuffs that they could have applied and trying to do it in slots three and four instead now which means that the only actual metals they have left for actual legitimate damage is going for the most part to be just their last two slots and when you think about it they're trying to do most of their damage from basically their last two slots compared to you who probably is using their entire keyblade setup to do most of your damage uh, so when you compare like five to six slots compared to like two slots uh, in terms of damage the chances for the opponent to actually recover in time and even do enough damage for that for that most part uh, to be able to beat you that round is going to be pretty difficult like even for like whales and such that's going to be very difficult even if they have EA and such it's going to be difficult but because of the fact you can't really do that as much anymore and you have to put them in the beginning of your setup they are just 20 times more susceptible to ailments skipping them now which is for the most part pretty much giving ailment strategies the kind of buff uh that they've been needing for quite some time now because of the fact that damage just pure damage strategies 
for the most part in PvP had just been taking over for a little bit too long than I than I would like that I am comfortable with. So just know that once the cap increase happens, if you run across someone who's running a status ailment strategy, you're kind of screwed. <laughs> just keep that in mind. You are screwed. <laughs> Now, although you can use status ailment strategies completely by themselves, alongside damage setups as well, just like usual, um, like I've kind of been saying for the longest time now, status ailment strategies are best to be used with the turtling setups, uh, just because of the fact that if you make them skip their medals, on top of the fact you actually turtle, um, the opponent, no matter like how much they do, will just do significantly less damage compared to what you did just because of the fact they're not able to recover in time. So before I talk about the PvP side of turtle, uh, let me just talk about turtling in general and what got affected by it. So because of the fact that the cap is now at plus 15, that also means that the turtling cap has also been increased to 15 as well. So all of your defense buffs can go to 15 and all of the strength debuffs can go to 15 as well. So the best turtling setup in the entirety of the game for right now is going to be Demix Plus used twice alongside Mrs. Incredible. Now the main reason because of this, in case you aren't aware, is because of the fact that Mrs. Incredible does have overwrite and provides a minus seven uh, general strength debuff on top of a minus two uh, PSM debuff as well. But the main reason we are using Mrs. Incredible is primarily for the minus seven general strength debuff. Because uh, as of right now, she's pretty much the only metal in the game that actually provides such a huge amount of general strength debuffs. The metal that comes in second place in terms of general strength debuffs is Demix Plus himself, just because of the fact he provides minus four general strength debuffs. So together, when you have Prime Mrs. Incredible having seven and you use Demix twice providing a total of eight uh, general strength debuffs altogether it's a minus 15 general strength debuff as shown right here okay on top of the fact that because of the fact that we are using demix plus twice we are having a total of plus 14 uh, defense buffs overall across the board so as of right now this is going to be the meta setup for turtling now in relation to pvp the reason why i was saying that status ailment strategies are best to be used with turtling strategies is because of the fact that like i mentioned before if you're using a status ailment strategy you're more than likely going to make them skip their overwrite metal so like for example if i happen to make them skip their stained glass number seven like right here that means that well first of all these two are going to be skipped even if they have some buffer and debuffer metals right here in like the next few slots they have plus 15 or like 15 or 14 defense buffs right here that they have to chip away first before they can even get my defense <laughs> to below zero um which unless they have just a ton of extra attack medals that are like supernova medals and such is going to be fairly difficult they're gonna have to spend at least two of their slots like just these two slots alone assuming they even have extra attack just to get rid of all 15 of my defense buffs this is not even counting the minus 15 debuffs that they had uh, they I'm assuming they would have as well uh, that they would need to recover in which case they're literally going to be spending just like with status ailments their last two medals in uh, slots doing most of their damage if any damage for that matter compared to what you've done so it's because of this that turtle setups also got a huge buff because of this and overall i would pretty much more or less say that because of the fact we now have a new cap increase the state of pvp is probably uh more healthier than it's ever been before the only other time i would say that the state of pvp has ever been this healthy in terms of a gameplay perspective i'm not talking about rewards and whatnot just in terms of a gameplay perspective is when pvp first came out because the fact that tier 7 medals uh no one had any uh seven star medals just yet uh, on top of the fact that overwrite metals didn't exist yet, it was pretty much almost exactly what it is going to be right now, where we actually had to make legitimate setups and the people with the best setups would win. It was a lot more focused on actual strategy 
chasing for the right types of metals and using the right types of metals and making legitimately good setups. Uh, so now the buff cap increase has legitimately made PvP a whole lot more healthier now. Uh, rather than actually having to use turtling and ailments together to fight against damage setups alone, uh, now you can actually just use all of them kind of separately to kind of get around that, which is pretty nice in my opinion. The next strategy I want, I'm going to talk about is going to be the buffer method. Now, the buffer method did receive a huge buff because of this cap increase. And believe it or not, is pretty much, at least in terms of PvP, going to be heavily used from this point onwards. Uh, and I even put together a kind of picture right here to, as an example to show what I'm talking about. So in setup number one, Keyblade number one over here on the left hand side, I, I do show um, a setup that has a complete amount of plus 15 buffs and debuffs okay so this entire setup is dedicated to just providing buffs and debuffs that will carry over into the next keyblade setup now for the sake of pvp just pretend that your keyblade one is like your your throwaway keyblade this is your weakest keyblade it's guaranteed to lose as you go up to ranks and such um, so you're pretty much just dedicating it towards trying to make your next setup stronger we have key art number, I think this is 12. This has Dispel, which will help get rid of any opponent's buffs or debuffs that they happen to have on them. On top of assumingly having our defense skill on it itself for defense for max or whatever uh, for the setup. And then the rest of the setup is just meant for the buffer method, okay? Now, every single metal that's here in the setup does last for two or more turns, which is the whole point of this throwaway keyblade. So because of the fact that this entire keyblade it has achieved a max buff and debuff for the keyblade and stuff it will be able to carry over into the next keyblade setup so just for reference this first keyblade is actually fenrir the second keyblade is actually dark Knoll. um so i went with just like power setups in general but because of the fact that we are able to carry over an entire maxed out buff and debuff from Keyblade 1 into Keyblade 2, we actually don't have to focus on any, uh, on using any buffer, debuffer metals at all whatsoever, which is the whole point of the buffer method. And we can go straight into doing just maxed out damage if we wanted to. But overall, this is a hard example of what I'm talking about, that the buffer method got a hard buff and will be definitely be used uh, from this point onward, onward more than it already is. Uh, and one of the main metals to be doing so is going to be the stained glass metals, the new ones, because of the fact they last for two turns, um, as well as the Ased, Gula, and Envy four teller metals, because they last for three turns as well. They will be able to carry over into Keyblade number two, or the next Keyblades, whatever, in which case you already took care of almost half of your buffs and debuffs that you have to worry about, so you don't have to spend like two uh, slots or even three slots in order to get the rest of your buffs and debuffs. You would only have to spend like maybe one or two at most. Now, like I mentioned before, it is because of the fact of how much better the buffer method is going to be because of this new cap increase that also means that the dispel metals, like I mentioned before, are going to, as a kind of side effect, receive a huge increase in uh, usage as well. Because like you see right here, in the example I provided, because the fact that all of the buffs and debuffs coming from slot one carry over into slot two for max damage, if we're able to cut that off in the very center, okay, and dispel that, so none of these buffs and debuffs actually carry over, this entire setup right here, Keyblade number two, is going to do very little to no damage at all, at least not nearly compared to what you're gonna be doing to them. And this is pretty much the entire reason why Dispel Metals are going to be seeing a, like, crap ton of more usage now. But other than that, that's it for today, guys. I know this was kind of a very long video today, but there was a lot to talk about. Chances are a good majority of you might not have gone into as much... Uh, thought as to how much these cap increases are going to be affecting the state of the game, which is the whole point of why I made this video. But other than that, I would love to hear what your thoughts and your opinions are in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. It's the best way I know I upload more videos such as this one. I would really appreciate it and it would help the channel a lot. Uh, but other than that, my name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts Cross Nation, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace, guys.